Hi everybody, Jo here. Welcome to the first day of our Clockwork Carnival. Honestly, can't wait for this. Such a fabulous event. So whether you're joining us online for our four days or whether you're going to pop in to Lavinia HQ, Saturday and Sunday, whatever, whether it's online or in person, do you know what? It will just be lovely to spend time with you. Now, all the excitement about our new stamps, we've gone steampunk. And I'm hoping you're really going to enjoy this. Honestly, the design team have made such fabulous samples and we've all brought our own twist to steampunk. So if you didn't think you liked steampunk, do you know what? You're going to love it. There are so many different things you can do with these stamps. Great for men's cards as well. And how often do we struggle with those men? Sorry, men, but I do find you a bit difficult at times. Anyway, we'll edit that bit out so they won't hear. So today I thought I'd show you this design and this is what I'm coming up with. And it's just my little twist on steampunk and I just wanted to go for something a little bit elegant. Now this could be an anniversary card, it could be a wedding card. Again, you could change the colour. What do you think? I must admit, I love it. And we've gone for a bit of a 3D element. Look at the heart, sort of a honeycomb effect. Now, don't worry, it pops flat, look for posting, and then just pop it back up like that. I've got to be honest, I've had such fun with these new stamps, and I've loved creating this design. So I hope you're going to put the kettle on. I don't know what's a steampunk drink. Maybe you could Google it. Oh, sorry, look it up for me and let me know. So anyway, grab yourself a brew, cheeky snack, and join me. And let's have a go at creating a design I say similar to this because you know what I'm like I probably changed my mind halfway through so I'm going to start off with a piece of card and this is multifarious card and it's five and a half inches by eight inches I know you like to know the size and I'm going to start off with some stencil work now when I'm doing something like this, quite a clean and simple design, I often go for one or two colours just to keep it. Um, I find for me it gives a classier result. And I've gone for one of the new elements, the blue at all. And I have to say, I adore this colour. Not really a blue person, but this has really, really captured me. I'm getting bits. It's probably off these gloves, sorry. And if they distract you, I'm sorry. It's just my homage to steampunk. I just felt like doing something a bit silly today. Now, I'm going to use the stencil. And when I was creating this design, what it was... Sorry, Eric's just jumped up under my desk. Sit down, mate. He obviously wants to go a bit steampunk with us. Um... Because I'm going to use the Gorgeous Heart, when I looked at my stencils, I thought this one, the Replenish, would work really well. Again, I want to keep it sort of my theme. I want it to look a lovely, cohesive design. So we're going to do corner to corner. As you know, it's just something I like to do. And I'm going to use number seven in my stencil brushes, just because for me, this middle size works well. Now, for this design, I want the most of my colour to be in the middle and work my way out. Normally, I like my colours da uh, corners darker, don't I? But not today. So what I'm going to do, if I can just bring that in, I almost want to make sure I've got just... Let me have a look. Spend a bit of time getting your stencil just how you want it. I'm thinking you don't want to have the line and go over it, do you? So... Yeah, that's okay. And we'll start here. So into my ink and then just take some off in the lid. And I want the most of my colour here. I'm reckoning my heart's going to be about here. So I'm going to start here. And then gently, gently, remember, tickle the stencil. And I'm just going to work my way. I'm not taping the stencil down. I find I don't need to. Just come out to the sides a little. If I want to check, lift it up. Remember, I'm holding it here. Lift it up. Oh, that's lovely. We'll just add a little bit more here and here. Gently, gently build it up. There's no rush. Just a wee bit more. I want to get that heart there. Yes, I'm happy with that. So I like that, the way that flows there. So I'm going to turn it round and I want to... Do this corner here. 
So I'm going to go for that, I think. And again, dab off in the lid. And I'm going to start on the dark a bit. And then again, gently, gently, lightly does it. And this is going to be my bottom corner. And again, nice light. Don't hold the stencil brush too, you know, don't, we're not digging for gold or rubbing or we're just gently, gently. It's very pretty. Just get that little heart there. Let's have a look. Maybe just a little bit there. And then that's, and this is where my heart's going. So don't worry, I know we overlap there, but th I'm happy with that. So we put the lid on that. And remember, we've got ink on here. So I'm just going to grab myself another piece of card. But again, if you've got your journal, get your journal out. And this is where Eric gets a lovely spritz of water. Now, I'm not sure how much ink we've actually got on there. But you know what? It's a background. And if we get anything, it's a bonus. You're cleaning up that ink, that's all. And if this gives me a starting point for another design, let's have a look. Yeah, oh yeah. You see, it would have been criminal to throw that away, wouldn't it? Let's have a look, look at that. And I just think, look at that, especially when it dries, that's definitely going to give me a starting point for another design. So we'll file that over there. And we'll go back to our design here. I'm going to do some stamping. So I'll just get my copy of paper. And we're going to use the small heart. So this is a gorgeous stamp. There's a large one. Just show you the size difference. That's the large one and that's the small one. Again, they work beautifully together, look, or beautifully when they're separated. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to use my black and I'm just going to give myself an idea where I would like this on my design. And again, I'm going to come off centre. I have a thing about things. If things are in the centre, they have to be dead on centre for me and I'm not very good at that. So I'm just going to put it here there and again look at that detail absolutely beautiful but obviously we're going to make our lovely heart to go on top of this so in the background we want this beautiful design now this stamp is the masquerade stamp absolutely gorgeous look and we're going to use this as i say as part of the design i mean the detail in this honestly it is just exquisite can you tell i paused with the name it's quite funny the hardest bit i find when we get new stamps is remembering the name you know i tend to give them their own names i'm going to put this sort of in the middle just with the eye poking out there and then I want to do the same on the other side so I'm just going to put that and as I say this I'm just using the beautiful detail to give myself um, more of a background you know think about your stamps then you don't have to use them exactly you know, this is a mask. I just like the ornateness of it, if that's such a word, ornateness. If not, I think we've just made it into one. So we'll add this one here. And then one more at the base. Just caught a bit on there. 
just thinking there. Look at that, absolutely stunning. And then what I do want to do is come in and just add a little bit more detail with a little cog. Now we've got the most gorgeous cog sets. Now I think this one is, one is from cog set three. But there are so many different cogs that would work well with this. I just wanted a little bit more detail. I just think the design is crying out for something there. And then the same at the bottom. And I love doing this with stamps, you know. As you know, I'm a bit of a wreath girl and just building up a whole design. And I love the way you can just see it almost taking shape in front of you. And I think that, mm, for me, just gorgeous. And then we've got a fabulous script. And I love my script stamps. And this one is the Steampunk script. And the colour I've gone for is in my Versafine Claire. It's Warm Breeze. And, and again, often, you know, I get messages off crafters asking how we put colours together. Well, for me, when you hold the two together, the blue atoll and the warm breeze look, you know, they're just made for each other, aren't they? Now, what I would suggest first, when you get a stamp like this, obviously we need to check whether we want first or second generation. And now we've got some lovely new crafters with us today. So your first generation is your first stamping, the first lot of ink on your stamp. But you've still got some ink left on there, look. So second generation is when we take it and stamp again and we haven't re-inked. Oh, I like second. Now, in fact, we can probably get a third generation from this. And again, look, it gets paler each time. So I'm thinking for our stamping on here, we need second generation. I think first will be too bright, too bold. We want this to be in the background. Sometimes you want your stamps to be focal points. Sometimes we want them in the background. So we'll stamp it once on the copy paper, look. And then we'll stamp it here. I need to try and get it straight. And it's important to overlap this slightly because, again, we want it to look like a lovely background design. So we need things to overlap. So we just need a little bit there. So we'll ink up the top, take the first generation off, and I'm going to have to turn this to the side just because it's easier for me to then go that way. And again, I'm just following that lovely shape. So ink up again. Take our first generation off. And then in this corner, if we overlap there. The hardest bit with this is getting it straight. So I tend to line mine up. And there we go. So we've got that lovely flow along and this is all building the background up so while we're working on the background we'll stamp our lovely sentiments every second counts now again if this was an anniversary card if it was a wedding card i mean again you could do a wedding card and do the color to match the bridesmaids couldn't you maybe every second counts maybe we'd need a happy anniversary or something on there but i think for this but to me, do you know what? Every second does count in life. It really does. And you need to make the most of it. So I'm happy with that. So what we'll do now is put that to one side and we'll create our heart design. Now I'll just turn that over so it looks a little bit, bit cleaner, a bit more professional. And what we're going to do, we're going to stamp our heart. And I keep, and I'm sure you're, you're like me, aren't you? Lovely ladies and gentlemen, us crafters, we keep everything. So those scraps, those offcuts that you keep, they're ideal for this. And what we're going to do, we need to stamp the heart four times. And we're going to use the black, the nocturne. So again, for me, one. Now this heart works really well, and I'm sure this is what you do as well. 
you can actually get more we are going to fussy cut these but you can get more on your piece of card if you sort of top and tail and if that's not an expression you use because i know we've got lovely followers from all over the world and i know i have lots of quirky sayings so if we just put it the opposite way round we can fit more on look and in fact often when you're doing this wouldn't that make a gorgeous border or do you know if you had a dl card um, a slimline card that would make a gorgeous pattern you could put it right along your card you know if you were stuck for a, a design i think that would be fabulous right stop missus we need four of those now we also need a little butterfly now i must admit this mini flutter i seem to have used it so much recently you know when we all have i know we shouldn't have favorites but i'm afraid we do so i'm going to stamp this one a couple of times as well as i say he's been sneaking on most of my designs at the minute and i also want a random number we've got some very useful number stamps so thank you tracy these are going to be so useful for birthdays anniversaries the year somebody was born a special date you know but i'm just going to go for random number three and we'll just block that again you versifying claire a slower drying ink now what we're going to do now is we just have to check that's completely dry so we'll do the old belt and braces which means we're making doubly sure it's dry and just using our heat tool because we're going to do our fabulous cheats way of colouring and I say cheats way, you know me, I love a good cheat. And I'm going to take my stencil brush again and I'm literally going to colour the heart's look. So I'm just going to take my stencil brush and colour. Now, if you need a card in a rush, I mean, it's not just if you need a card in a rush. You know, it, it is a, <laughs> a direct to paper way of actually adding colour. But I know some ladies, and especially if you're new to crafting, can struggle with, with colouring and, and how to not get lines. And I mean, if you want to watercolour these and you've got the time, by all means, you watercolour them. But it's nice just to show you an alternative way. And if you look, I'm doing my butterflies as well. I'm not going to do my number three. I want my number three as it is. Oh, now I do need a couple of roses as well which the stamp seems to have escaped me. So I've actually already got some that I've stamped and cut out. So I'll show you those. We've got a gorgeous roses set. And I've already stamped and coloured those and cut them out. The craft fairies have just moved my stamp, so please excuse me for that. So what you would do now is cut these out. And I've got to be honest, they are an absolute... Don't worry, I've got some cut out. We're not going to spend... because. I know you like spending time with those crafters, but you don't want to watch me cut all these out, do you? But it is such a great shape to cut out this look. And I know some ladies and gentlemen struggle with dexterity problems, but a shape to cut out this is just a fabulous look. Just whiz your scissors round like that. Done. Very useful. What you do need to do and again, just for that extra attention to detail, is just add a little bit of colour on the back. And that's just for when we're putting our hearts together. It will just help. We'll just spritz this, get Mr Inky Binky and clean that up. What that does is, if we've got any overlap at the back, it will just make it look a lovely, lovely, um, fabulous piece. Now, the next thing you need to do is get yourself a scoreboard any scoreboard you've got and take the heart and score it so literally put the top of the heart on a score line and the tip there and then just score down the middle look and you need to do that on three of them so that it will then fold really easy again so what we've got to recap we've got three hearts look that have been scored 
and then we've got one heart that's flat. And what we're going to do is get our bippity boppity glue and we're just going to glue these together. Now remember this is a dries clear glue and again I'm just going to smudge mine and then pop this here and again you've got a little bit of wiggle time so just slide it we all like a bit of wiggle time don't we there we go now you could leave it at one look if you wanted but no we need a bit more don't we so we'll put another lot on here again just use your finger and then you get every little bit And again, pop that one on there. And then just wiggle that one a bit. And honestly, this is easy when you're at home on your own than when you're crafting with friends. <laughs> so there we go. That gives us the design. Now, when you pop it together, look, if there's any little bits that you just want to trim, if you can see, if it overlaps a little, what I do is I just trim like that. So again, here, I've got a little bit of overlap there. And you know what? Nobody will ever know. So you don't tell and I won't tell. The other thing is, if you just wanted, let's get rid of those bits, you could get your black fine liner and just add a black line. And then what we're going to do alive I told you it wasn't as easy when you were watching and then we're going to take this and actually glue it on our heart now I know you could say we didn't need to color this in but for me if there's any edges showing I just think it's nice to have the whole design and to be honest once you start coloring it for me it's easier to color them all than think about which one I don't need to color I'm a bit like that, me. I don't know if you're the same. So what we'll do is we'll pop this on here. And again, just pinch it at the base there. There we go. And so you've got that lovely, almost honeycomb. Now, what about hanging decorations? You could put a thread in there, couldn't you? And make the most gorgeous hanging decorations. And this is the smaller one. So remember, you could do this with the larger one as well. Think of the possibilities. I just think this will be lovely. So what we'll do is we'll pop this on here now. Again, just some glue on the back and I'm just going to put it exactly on top just so I know exactly where to place it. And then to finish off, we've got those lovely roses done exactly the same way. And we're just going to put these down here in this corner. So again, with the BB glue, just for a bit of extra effect. I think that's a bit of extra detail. I love these are perfect for making your own embellishments. And then we'll come in with the lovely butterfly. Now again, I cut his antennae off. But that's fine because I'm going to draw them back on. I find that easier. If you're the sort of person that's quite happy cutting round them by all means you do that again we all craft to our best way don't we so I think we'll just pop that one there now in my original that was the design but I just fancy putting another one down here so this is going to be slightly different we'll add another one here so we'll just put little antennae there bit more glue we'll put this one flying this way just 
shaking my Posca pen ready. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to place this. I've got a piece of blue card ready, look. And I've put a black Sharpie line round. Again, just that foam matting and layering with the black. Now in this corner, I've got my lovely number three. And somewhere, I've got my tin with these hinge clips in. And these go perfectly with your steampunk. So again, all I'm going to do is glue just this random number three. Now it could be if this was for a wedding anniversary, you could put the number of years. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? And what we'll do is, where's that Posca pen? I'm just going to add a little bit of Posca to this, to the metal. And again, your Posca's the acrylic paint. And pop that on there. And I'll glue that later. But what I want to just show you is we're going to add some Posca splats. So just now again, if you're not keen on your Posca, I can't say it, can I? Posca splats. Walk away. We'll just add some little white highlights to the rose look. And again, remember, pump your Posca. It's a pump action. If it doesn't work, and sometimes they can be a bit funny. So a good shake and a, and a good pump. That's today's motto, shake and pump. And then we'll add a few light splats, look, by tapping just over the heart. But I just want some meatier, so I'm going to flick. Just to get, for me, this, these designs are perfect for my splats. You just by that whip, let's whip. Right, don't overdo it. Stop, walk away from the Posca splats. And there we go. Now, I think this would look lovely in my journal. Again, remember, my heart will go flat. Or just as a standalone card. And really, it wasn't difficult, was it? But I love this design and I do hope you have a go. As I say, maybe make some hanging ones. In fact, I might need to go and make some hanging ones, especially with the large. Yeah, I'm thinking. Do you know what? For weddings, both our boys are, are just got engaged and they're getting married in the next couple of years. So I might just have to ask if I can make the hanging decorations. So exciting. So thank you for joining me today. We've got a fabulous lineup for the rest of the day and the rest of the, the next three days. And if you come into Lavinia, do pop in, say hello. We can't wait to spend some time with you. You take care, everybody. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.